gamers today we're back with another video and this time the third one in the series of analyzing some video games it is the grand finals against the may may lord aka marine lord aka the chimp aka well he's no longer french uh, god as in like civilization doesn't really play french anymore. but we're out here and we're ready uh, this is the Grand Finals. The Grand Finals was a best of seven. Now, this video is a bit delayed, but luckily the replays are still here. So let's get into it. So game number one was Himeyama. And uh, I had decent sieves for Himeyama, but there, he had a... I can't remember exact what sieves he had, but he I, I know he had like a good sieve for here. So I was like, okay, if he picks that sieve and I pick not so good sieve here, and I lose, it's not a big deal. So sometimes in a best of seven, especially because the game is still relatively early from um, the DLC, I didn't want to get countered. And I also didn't want to use one of my good sieves here because I wasn't sure what he's gonna he's gonna pick. I said, okay, I'm gonna pick Jushi's Legacy, which is not played on this map at all. So he's not gonna expect it. So even if I get countered, at least he uses up a good save or whatever, and it's all good. So we ended up playing Ayubid versus Jushi's Legacy, which Ayubid is one of the sieves he plays uh, a lot from what I've seen. And um, I felt pretty good because this is uh, um, post-nerf Jushi's Legacy, which is not as good as it used to be. And I feel like it was probably the weakest sieve in my lineup uh, currently. So, or not of all sieves, but of the sieves that I had. So I felt like, okay, I got one of his good sieves. I got, you know, probably my worst sieve in my best of seven draft. So if I win, I mean, that's crazy. That's good. Love that. If I lose, it's not a big deal. We just go on, right? So he started with a uh, little dock, some fishing ships over here. And um, also, I have been got nerfed recently, but their style just changed a bit. So people are not not doing the uh, Ayubid fast castle anymore where you know you age up at like 5:30 to castle with the um, culture wing instead what people are doing is sorry i gotta put my legs up because it's gonna be a while best of seven uh what they're doing right now is they're going military wing into economy wing i've seen a lot of people do that or culture wing logistics so um when you age up with growth uh, wing in castle or to castle, you get 10 villagers, which is quite a lot, right? So I went for meditation gardens and meditation gardens got nerfed too. And I actually got very, very low amount of resources compared to what it used to be. So the nerf for Jushi's legacy is quite noticeable, but it is what it is. So. I'm gonna speed up a little bit here. So he got pretty boosted up economy from this and he just ended up putting some pressure on me. He had the uh, like desert raider, which I had to make Zuginu 4 to, you know, to deal with. Um, 10 is M. Wait, is it 8? Oh, it's 8. Okay, never mind. Still, it's a shit ton of villagers. And your um, berries give 100 more food per berry, which is crazy. So it's eight villagers, but it's still quite a lot. It's a big boom So um, I again, I don't really play Jushi legacy on this map I don't think anyone really does so I wasn't sure how to play it because it's a very open map uh, I try to go to TC and get a TC here going so you know I can have a lot of food at my disposal and try to maybe you know age up somewhat quickly and I wasn't sure how he's gonna play this matchup uh, but he ended up just making units and being aggressive, so he went horsemen plus archers, and later on he just kind of um, he just kind of aged up. Now the start was already rough because I didn't expect him to attack, but I was like, oh fuck it, I'm committing, and I ended up losing I think like five workers, four or five workers, which was pretty pretty bad. Yeah, four. Yeah. So I already lost four workers, so I'm like, oh fuck. I knew it was already not a good spot. And now he's in a position where he can age up and he decides to pull the workers. Maybe he felt like he did enough damage. So he just goes for an age up right now while still kind of producing units here and there. And my eco just felt bad this game. Like I, I don't know. Like I I I felt like I just didn't have resources to produce stuff. And um 
I don't know. I had a lot of idle time as well. I can't really wall off because it's like such a big area to wall. He kept harassing here. I tried to build a tower, but he had a lot of archers. And uh, yeah, now he's aging up with the eco wing growth. So even though now it's like equal in workers, he's about to age up and be ahead in workers, even though I'm on two town centers. So um, yeah, just a pretty rough start for me, pretty good start for him. And uh, like I said, I never felt like I had a good amount of income or resources. Um, and I was just kind of struggling for resources, to be fair. Uh, so, yeah. So now I'm still producing units. I'm getting a pretty big army so I can fight his army. Uh, he ages up and I'm like, uh oh, that's not good. Because I'm nowhere close to age up. So I'm like, do I keep producing units? Do I stop producing units? Do I try to push? So I try to do a little push here. But obviously I know that like Lancers or, or Ghulams are, are coming. So here I'm out of wood and I'm like soon I'm gonna run out of food because there's not a lot of food left here. And once that happens I'm kind of tapped out. So here he keeps pushing. Keeps going for it. I got Zuginu farming, doing some decent trade, and then he makes a mangono, which is obviously a big problem because I'm still in feudal. So I make two towers, and I upgrade with arrow slits. He goes with this upgrade so he can destroy the towers because he has no melee units. Right? It's 31 archers. I went for the boar here to get myself some more food. And what I did here was like, well, I need to stay here because I need food. So I would repair the tower with two villagers and then once the villagers get low I would just move them and use two new villagers to repair the towers. So this manual actually didn't do that much and he should have probably just made a ram and, and gone for it sooner, right? Now he's getting the relics and I think he got all five relics this game. So I'm doing some repairing again. Boom, boom, boom. I'm getting, uh, I'm aging up right now. I'm getting more barracks. And I thought like once I make palace guards, I'm going to be in a good spot. And I think I would have been if I had access to like more food. Maybe I should have gone here, but I was too scared because it's so open. Um, but basically I was like getting my upgrades and all that. And soon I needed to transition to farms because now I am officially out of food. I have these guys and the boar and that's it. So he destroys the towers, now I'm just chilling uh, on my TC, waiting for the upgrades to finish. Veteran Zuginu, getting my uh, plus one, or plus two, plus two for ranged. And I really thought I would be in a fine position, because I'm like, you know, I've been on two TC the entire time. He hasn't, you know, he's pushing pretty hard, so I was like, if I just hold, I'll be, I'll be alright, you know. And we have an engagement here. I catch the mangonels, kind of. Zugin are coming in, and I was like, okay, let's go. You know, we're, we're doing fine, we're doing good. And uh, I kind of thought that I had this game after that. Now there's some camel answers, so I had to run away, do a little back and forth. I was transitioning to food, so I was like, okay, I just gotta get the food going, transition, so I can spam palace cards, right? I'm walling off here, so I can also go for these uh, two food sources if needed. I'm doing a little run by, right? The mango is back. I could have also gone for earlier siege, like I could have gone for uh, nest of bees or just springles to kill the mangoes or something, because they were kind of creating the mangoes were creating a, a lot of problems right now. He has second TC now too. So obviously, when I when I played economically, I thought I was in a better spot. But if you look, it's all it's identical workers, and he has five relics. So obviously, I was not in that good of a position right now. I go for another engage. I think I'm trying to get to the uh, yeah, I'm trying to get to the mangono. I'm mowing down everything with Zuginu. The mangono goes down, and I was like, uh oh, uh oh. The farm transition is still happening. And again, I kind of hold and I kind of feel like, oh, that's fine. But right now he's just pumping units. He has so many relics. He's getting all the upgrades that he needs. 
He's still got food sources in the map that he can go for. I did finish walling this off. And now, yeah, I went for a double siege workshop because I was like, oh, well, I can just fucking spam siege. Because Nested B is, you know, is a pretty good skill to have, so I'll just do that. And um, the problem is, as I was transitioning now to farms and food, I don't have a lot of units, I don't have a lot of food. So I'm struggling a little bit. So if you compare food counts, he has 2.6k per minute, and I have 1 3. So he's just producing way more units right now. I get my siege out. They start doing a little pepper spraying. Uh, he's trying to get the uh, the nest of bees. I do some micro here, try to keep them up, try to keep them alive. And again, I defend, but this is where him having way, way more food income starts to, you know, play a pretty big role because now he can do run buys. I don't even have enough units to <laughs> chase that. Uh, he got the sacred side, so the game kind of just snowballs from here on out more and more. And even though I'm getting farms up, it feels like it's just a little bit too late. Like if I had these farms two minutes ago, maybe I can hold. But he keeps pushing and he kept trading uh, pretty well. So I ended up uh, getting a wreck, to say the least. And I think he's, I don't know if he's aging up already. No, he's not aging up yet, but he also, I know, aged, or was aging up uh, at the end of this game. So, still kind of holding. Trying my best. There's more horsemen over here. And, uh... Trying to defend. Again, I, I feel like multiple times I get a pretty good engagement. I was like, hold up, wait a minute. And then I throw... So here I managed or managed to fuck up with the, with the nest of bees because there was harassment happening everywhere and it was like pinging in my head. So again it kind of feels good but not really and I just decided to tap out because I think there were horsemen in the back. Uh, Ghulams as well being annoying idling my economy you can see right there as well. So I end up tapping out but it was a pretty pretty good build pretty good style from him it was like just non-stop aggression. And I feel like there were so many points where I almost held, but not quite. It was like, I needed, every time I feel like I needed another 30 seconds to be fine, but, you know. Um, the next game was Japanese versus Mongol, and I chose Prairie as my next map. Because I had Mongols, and Mongols is the strongest Civ on Prairie, in my opinion. So, we'll speed up, because we got a lot of games to, to cover, but... Um, I, I just went for a tower rush. I wasn't sure what's which civ he's gonna pick here because there's no real good civs in this map uh, Against Mongol in his lineup that he had so when I saw him pick Japanese I was like, okay, he either knows something or You know, he's gonna get wrecked So here, uh, I don't know if I already saw it. Let me check Yeah, I saw the barracks and I was like, okay, this is a win uh, because Japanese cannot fight Mongol in Dark Age, so I already felt uh, pretty good about this game. Then I just did, you know, the classic tower rush, you know, with spears. I wasn't moving out immediately because I know he has spears. I can see he's still not mining gold, so I know that he's just, you know, producing spears. He's focused on that. So basically what you want to do is continue to produce... Um, Continue to produce spears, then produce double spears, and eventually you will have more, and you can start the tower rush, and then force something there. And you usually can age up sooner as well as Mongo, which is kind of why they're strong in these kinds of maps. So he goes for a tower here. I go for a tower too. I kill one spearman, so already better trade. Uh, my spearman is super low health, but it did survive. I get another charge off, another Spearman goes down, and he is already behind. And in these Dark Ages, when you uh, lose a Spearman or two, you cannot really recover, you know? Uh, like, he can't just keep producing Spearman, like, he cannot have more than me. So, basically at this point, he has to give up making Spearman and try to age up. But because he gives up making Spearman, I can now complete my tower. And even though he has a faster age up, now I have tower in there. 
Uh, another thing, because he stopped making spearmen, he only had, I think, yeah, six spearmen, and he had five villagers in a tower. I had, I think, like 13 or 14 spearmen here total. I think one died already, maybe. And I just used the Khan arrow. I put Khan first to take shots from the tower, and then I charge in. But he changed the, uh, the attacking of the tower into spearmen. That's what you want to do. And I get a pretty good engage. Obviously, I win the battle. And he knows he can't hold. He initially pulled villagers here to repair, but then he changed his mind. I burned this um, this tower. He destroys the camp immediately, the forge, so I don't get the, the, the gold and the food. And at this point, the gold has been denied, which is kind of the main goal. I have double tower even, and now I can even go tower over here. So now he needs to do like archer range or something, but he has no gold, so if this tower goes up the game is pretty much over it's already over but it's super over if this tower goes up so here he's making onas but i have a shit ton of spearmen i aged up i got silver tree i'm making stables i'm gonna make archer range in a second this tower finishes i upgrade i upgrade these towers here and I see him moving all the way here. Why? Well, because there's trees and there's gold. So if he establishes this, he can maybe come back into the game, right? So, right now I'm just roaming around, seeing if I can do any damage. Who the fuck could I keep yawning? Sorry about that. And, uh... Oh, no. Did he not have... Oh, la, la. Okay, he did have wood. I don't know from where. Maybe he can from something. But anyway. Um, so he gets the lumber camp here. He, you know, he's going to try to mine gold. And all I needed to do now, because everything is so denied. I could have even put this tower, by the way. I could have put it here to deny farms. But I didn't want to be too greedy. So now I'm trading. I'm trading over here. Because I have two towers covering. Three towers. So you can't really attack that without going through the towers. Instead of going here, which would be a mistake, because as you can see, he is going with Onas up there to deny the, the trade, because that's where you usually trade. But I trade it to his side instead. So, yeah, at this point, because he had so much idle time and moving, all I need to do is literally just attack right now. Um, I'm getting plus one range attack. I'm waiting for a couple more units. And I just go for it. I mean, he has four archers and one spearman and three on this. I activate the attack speed arrow for the archers and he taps out. Very quick in and out. The next game is an exciting one. It was OOTD against Jean Dark. I think I was the only player in this whole tournament that actually picked OTD. And I picked it three times throughout the tournament. So it was Order of the Dragon versus Jean Dark. JD did receive a nerf when she is level 3. Uh, you need to now upgrade her in castle in order to reach her old stats. And in this game, he decided to go for uh, to town center. Meanwhile, I had... So this is EGC Lipany. So EGC Lipany uh, is a little bit of a different Lipany to usual one. You're closer to the edge of the map. And your food is usually forward Because your TC is kind of back all your food is forward, right? And sometimes on this map kind of often to be honest boar can spawn really close to your main TC um, So this is the boar it was like here But I pulled it closer to the uh, deer pack and I went for boar in dark age so Here already uh, you know, that's a pretty nice economic boost and I was like, okay, cool I can make a tower here maybe later on and then just get deer too. So I get a lot of resources straight away uh, On the other side. Yeah, he went for two town centers Which I'll show you guys in a little bit when it happens. I'm aging up with mine work just one worker I'm not rushing feudal. I don't care about rushing feudal and meanwhile I had one worker just gathering stone back and forth because I didn't want to um, I didn't want to build mining camp because I needed like 70 something stone 
because I wanted to upgrade two towers. I wanted to upgrade this tower and this tower so I can safely rush into castle. Uh, so this is where the knights start coming out, but I already have both towers up. So, you know, if you look at my vision, uh, I have really, really good amount of vision. Look at that. Right? So I can kind of see where the units are, where the units are coming from. Um, so I can just kind of hop in. I got the arrow slit upgrade on both towers. And now what I'm doing is I'm just going to be aging up slowly. I didn't really get any eco upgrades. I think I got survival techniques. I'm pushing the deer here, which is pretty nice. <coughs> oh yeah, and I made a horseman. So the reason I made a horseman is, um, uh, well, I saw that he's going to town centers. I think I did actually, I'm not sure if I did or not. Uh, but what I wanted to do is go to this boar and kill Jean Dark. Now, I don't know if he saw my horseman or what, but he actually kind of went for it and then went away. So I was just waiting here with Horseman to try and kill the hero uh, when she's trying to, to kill the boar for XP. But that never happened, so you know, it is what it is. But I'm almost close to the age up, which is pretty nice. He's trying to do some damage, but there's nowhere uh, uh, to actually do the damage. He goes for archer range, I managed to deny that. I think I, no, I don't kill a villager. I'm just trying to harass. I'm going for Regnus Cathedral, of course. What else? And then I decide to go for, uh, well, I already had Stable, and then Barracks for Spearman plus Knight combo against JD or Friend, which works out really nice. Look at this easy clap. Look at this hero on my scout, or HP on my scout. One, boom, right there. Calculated risk, baby. So he's trying to come in here once again. I'm getting my eco upgrades. I'm getting my spearman upgrade. I'm gonna get, um, you know, prelate started. I'm gonna get knight started, and then produce spearman as well. So now my goal is to get all the relics with OTD while trying to harass or just protect my relics, depending where his army is, right? So. I'm mining gold with a lot of workers because I want to make sure I get upgrades. I want to make sure I'm producing prelates and I want to make sure I'm making knights. So now I produce gilded knights, which are obviously really, really strong. Uh, I actually did not see this at all because I think I was, yeah, I was harassing here. I kill a villager, but I lose two villagers. So that was pretty bad for me. And he's already ahead because he's on two TCs as well. So now the relic gathering starts. I send one prelate at the top, I send one prelate to get the relic here. And look at this gilded knight, look how much damage he does when he hits. Isn't that crazy? Look at that. Look at that. Boop! So I'm losing some units here, right? But my units are doing so much damage. Look at this. Knight and a spearman are just clapping left and right. And I think I lost two. Uh, I lost a scout and two spearmen, but he lost uh, uh, a lot more there. Or maybe no, I just lost a spearman and a scout. I think. So he lost a lot more there. And my army value is also way higher. So I have two knights. He has two knights as well, but obviously my knights are way stronger. And I have spearmen. And now he's producing like archers, but he doesn't have enough archers to counter the spearmen, right? Because these are three really, really strong spearmen. So I'm trying to trade here. I'm trying to do some damage. I'm getting the relics. I got two, three relics about to go in my base. And I can see that he's still producing units because the units are obviously still coming out. You know, the spearmen, the knights, and the archers. So I was like, okay, this is pretty good for me because I'm getting everything that I want to. Uh, and I feel like I'm trading better. And this is the point where I can just right click Sean with the knights and they're gonna get, she's gonna get demolished. Um, but also this is the point where because I'm constantly producing units and they're castle units, if he stops producing units, he's dead. Okay, he's just gonna immediately die. So he's stuck in this feudal age where he has to make units, but his units are just weaker. Uh, I'm now trading better. I can just micro my units back and heal them up. Not like that, but, you know, like this, for example. And uh, the knights are just doing so much damage that you need, like, 10 plus spears for these three knights, you know? Because they're very tanky and they do a shit ton of damage. 
So I'm doing a little wall of law here. I still have food. Uh, I have two, three relics already in my base, which is really nice. I'm getting sacred sites and I'm just continuing the push. I get a relic here, but he ends up denying it. And reminder, because this is EGC Lipany, all the food sources are in the front. Uh, not your first berries, but like all the other ones. And best case scenario, they're like to the side here where the deer was. But you can see the other deer are pretty far forward. 30 versus 18 units. He's nowhere close to aging up. I do a little charge here. And uh, now I have enough units where I can heal. Probably out heal his damage even because his units are futile. And he ends up tapping out. Well, that was OTD versus JD. And now in the series, I'm leading 2-1. to one. Again, this is a best of seven grand finals. Now, this is the most interesting game, in my opinion. By the way, for those that maybe don't know, this was the uh, Energies tournament called Energies Slap Fest number one. We're going to have more in the future, which is pretty cool. So this was HRE. So right after OTD, I, I picked HRE because you guys know I love HRE and I love OTD because they're similar, obviously. Uh, and it was Frisian Marches. So he actually snipes my HRE pretty well because I've been playing HRE on this map throughout the whole tournament. I played HRE quite a lot in this tournament. I think I went 4-0 with it. And um, basically Abbasid is a pretty good pick into HRE because... Um, you can put a lot of pressure onto HRE while having a pretty strong economy in Castle to the point where HRE can't just go fast import, they might die. So Abbasid is a pretty good pick, it's considered a good pick into HRE. But something interesting happened. So I go Chapel right here. I didn't have a good Chapel spot. Uh, I don't want to put Chapel here or something. I would rather have it next to the wood line than gold plus berries. So I'm getting my chapel out. I went two fucking scouts in this game. Uh, Three fucking scouts? No, no, two fucking scouts. And um, I just wanted to get a lot of the sheep. He got a lot of sheep too. I think I got like probably 24, 25. He got 15. This map has 40 sheep. Okay, apparently people are saying the stream is lagging. But I think it's Twitch because on my side everything looks normal. Like uh, upload does is not going down. I'm not dropping frames. So I'm not sure. Maybe it's switch potatoing. But so I, you know, I age up. I got my uh, sheep right here gathered up. He's going second town center. He went eco wing. And I was like, th this was in the middle of the game. This was not pre planned, right? This was not pre planned, but I was like. I was like thinking now, I was like, what if I go burger here? Because he went eco wing, right? So he's not putting pressure. And I never, ever, ever do burger. Ever. I always go cathedral with HRE, right? I don't think Marine Lords have ever seen me go burger. So I'm like, okay, do I go burger? Do I go cathedral? And I'm waiting here. I'm cooking. I know he only went to a TC. I'm spreading deer here and I'm killing them. So he gathers them at a shit rate. And I'm like, okay, I know he only went one extra TC. It might be a close timing, but I was like, do I do burger? Do I not? Do I do burger? Or not? So I'm waiting for his scout and I'm waiting to see if he's going to leave. So my thought process is if he leaves, I, I burger immediately. If he stays and he's like literally just waiting here, then I'll just go Cathedral. Because Burger would not work if he saw it coming. So I'm waiting. So I'm like, okay. So he goes here. And I'm like, fuck it. I'm just going to put Burger here. And even if he sees it, it's going to take another 10-15 seconds for him to get around. Which might be too late already. So he goes here. And if you look at his point of view. So I transfer villagers over with a trick through the TC. And he he's he's scouting for production, by the way. He's scouting if I have stables or barracks or anything because he wants to know if he needs to make something. And because Marine Lord and everyone else is so used to me going Cathedral, he's already pre-walling the relics. And he is now walking home. I'm, I'm doing a little bit of harassment. I'm being annoying here. He's already walling off the relics. He sends another villager. He's walling off this relic too. The scout is going around. 
checking stuff, maybe like trying to prevent me from blocking this, I'm not sure. But in the back there is Burger, and I also waited with Blacksmith until he's gone to build it. Because if he saw Blacksmith or Burger, he would know it's a Burger Rush. Because if I go Cathedral, you don't need, uh, you know, you don't need to make Blacksmith that early. So now here is the interesting part, is like I'm being a salesman and I'm trying to sell it. You know, so I'm trying to sell it that I want to block this, right? So I'm trying to destroy it, I'm trying to like stand here to like block it. Uh, you know, I'm attacking the villager. And one scout is always on his scout, because I want to know what he knows, right? So I can attack better. So, you can see one scout is here, I'm like pretending I'm like trying to stop this. And the other scout, I just want to know what he sees. So I start the burger and I rally them downwards so I avoid his scout and he turns around! And he turns around because this scout is blocking here. So now I know that he has no fucking idea this is happening because if he knew, why would he be walling up the relics? So there's a horseman, so I immediately turn backwards so I get his units away so the horseman doesn't go into my base. His horseman is here. I wait with men at arms. And he is also rushing castle behind it. He kind of went 2 TC, walling relics into Faust Castle. I'm making men at arms. I got plus one ranged armor. I'm getting marching drills. I'm producing the men at arms. And right now, his horseman is coming in. He does a little poke right here. He sees blacksmith. Nothing weird, right? And then. He sees burger. Yeah, I saw Marine Lord stream when he saw the burger. Yeah, it was pretty funny. So now here he's pro he's like, oh, what the fuck? And then the next thing on his stream, he saw the men at arms coming in, and he just started aging up. So he needs to survive for one minute and forty-five seconds with men at arms in his base, and obviously that's gonna be a pretty rough one. Marching drills is not completed. Obviously, I don't give a shit about relics. So I'm not even going for them. And I knew that this is probably just a win, straight up. So now I have men at arms, they're pouring in. And even though you're losing men at arms, it doesn't really matter. And um, I'm just sending men at arms everywhere, trying to, you know, prevent them from gathering stuff. Sending them to the gold. Obviously I know there's 22 idols on the TC, so I just keep sending units here so that he cannot gather food and even though he would get a uh, uh, you know camel rider soon um, and like deal with them but not really he has no food at all he has 22 food he's got no food per minute he's not even producing villagers so i'm sending another man at arm here and he taps out and uh at the pro level you know you, you might be wondering like why is burger bad like people do it against me all the time where i do it at the top top level burger is almost never ever ever used because most people can and know how to defend it so he decides to just tap out and leave the game and it is now three to one for me so it was three to one so we have three potential matches left right and i went with english here because i knew english is a good pick and he went with Rus to try to counter english because Rus is it's he Rus is okay on this map it's not bad but the reason why you pick it is because if you know you can play against English, so you can yeah, kind of snipe them. So, um, this matchup is pretty bad for English. Uh, Rus is favored in this matchup, and he actually had a matchup against B in semifinals where um, he played English and B played Rus, and he got fucking wrecked. Um, like Roos wrecked English. So I knew this was a bad matchup, but I was like, you know, it is what it is. If I lose this one, I still have good matchups. He's using Roos here, which is obviously one of the best civs. So we are all good. So, um, uh, my plan here was to just put one TC aggression and just try to force him into feudal and try to out micro him with, uh, with my unit. So I went two fucking scouts. He went uh, three, three. Yeah, that's right. I went two, and um, I was just trying to, you know, deny as much bounty. Obviously, uh, he has deer pack here, so he's getting a Kremlin on the middle, which defends uh, this wood line. Kind of defends this wood line. This gold, 
and deer pack and obviously blocks the middle path which is pretty nice you know it blocks off a huge chunk of the the map and also it makes it so that if i want to go from this side to this side very hard because i gotta rotate all the way around so it's a pretty good kremlin now at the top level if the roost player goes for two t's here he's instantly dead okay if uh, he goes to TC, he will die almost immediately because longbows outrange second TC. So even if he made a second TC on deer, he wouldn't be able to get any food from it. And you would have more units for a while. So it's just a no-go at the top level. So you kind of want to go for um, just one TC and you want to try to fight against English. Or you can go to TC, but you have to do it really well and really quick. But it, and you can lose. So it, most people feel like if you're just fighting against English and you win one fight, you'll be in a good position and you can do whatever you want, right? Because Roos does have better eco because of fatter, faster food gathering and bonus wood uh, dropped off. So right now, um, what's it called? Right now, I'm just doing a little bit of walling here. You know, I don't want Knights doing any damage. And most important, I have a scout here taking a little peek at stone number one, stone number two, and stone number three. So I'm just checking if he's going for second TC or not. So because he's not, and I saw that he's producing stables in archer range, I don't need to do anything. I can just wait here. I'm getting my upgrades. You know, my economy takes a little bit to kick in. I'm getting my upgrades, I'm gonna get my blacksmith, I'm still mining gold. I'm gonna slowly transition to farms. I am in no rush to finish this game because we're both in feudal and that's where English is really good at. Um, so I'm gonna start getting these upgrades too. And what I decide to do is I make a tower here. Now this might seem like a weird move, but the reason for this is I just want to delay the game um, so I am putting a tower here because I'm denying a deer pack a berry and a bull right here because he cannot come here now gather it so uh, what happens now is uh, again I'm just delaying the game I just want to stay in feudal uh, because the more longbows you have the better uh, the better longbows become right and uh, I think I even went for stone, if I remember correctly. I might have not, but I think I did. Oh no, I didn't go for stone, sorry. I didn't go for stone. Ah, uh, not yet, I went for stone later. So, I kept track of his army the whole time. And, by the way, I saw here that he went for second TC. I forgot to mention that. So I, I saw that he's mining stone and he went for second TC. Um, so I knew that you know, because he's mining so for second TC, he's not gonna have as many units. So I went to do a push, and then I got the tower here for free, basically, which prevented him from making a TC there. Um, now, I also had a scout on this side to make sure he doesn't go on this deer pack and this bull right here. So I knew that his food is very, very limited. Um, so for example, he only has this deer right here. He has berries. And he has berries here, which is pretty forward. And that's it. He's out of food. So all I need to do right now is not let him go here, not let him go here, and he will run out of food first. And when he does, I can just kill him with more units. So I'm just chilling right here. Um, not doing not doing much, you know, just waiting, building up an army. I'm finishing my, uh, my upgrades. I'm getting a second farm slowly started. And soon I will start pushing. Um, the scout goes down. Which was pretty nice. And now, if you look at the army count, nothing has happened. But that's because I've denied the resources really, really well. And he is pretty much very far behind on the army. So, now this is a question of... I'm not sure if I should have gone around or not. Maybe I could have just stayed here, but I decided to go around to put pressure on this side of the map because I did see the second TC as well putting put here. But when I went there, what it allowed him to do is to 
you know, get back to, to this side of the map, right? Maybe I could have also upgraded this with stone, you know, whatever. So another scout goes down, and I just one scout, and I decided to push through here. Since this is fallen, I was like, ah, fuck it, I'll just commit. I got siege engineering, I'm gonna make a ram, I'm making a tower here, and I'm just trying to pick off whatever I can. So he's trying to do some kind of counterattack here, but I have already enough rally units in my base, so that's not an issue. I'm doing a little wall here. And I'm trying to basically fight straight up, like straight on. Like I'm not trying to do harassment on this side. I just want to fight right now. Because uh, I knew I have better army and I'm in a better position. So I ended up killing his blacksmith. He had to make another one. So his plus one range that guy canceled. Um, there's the stone. There's the tower. Now I have the attack speed. I'm killing the uh, wooden fortress. And he's aging up with high trade house. Now, because I have this little mill right here, I see that he's gathering, so I just send a few men at arms to deal with that. The wooden fortress goes down, and I end up committing a little bit here. The TC is shooting at me, but who cares? I just go for it. He's already on farms, which is obviously not a good spot to be in. He ages up, and I just end up committing more. Like at this point, I knew that I have more units. I probably have better income because I have more farms and all I need to do is just keep pushing right now. So I decided to do that and I decided to just mow down the production and I decide to um, just keep pushing. So I put one ram on house, one ram on this and then two on the archer ranges. And this is the archer range that had the um, veteran archer upgrade. That goes down, and now his production is going down quite a bit. So he lost DC, wooden fortress, 3-4 houses, 2-3 archer ranges. And now I know he has to rebuild that, so he has to reinvest resources into that. This has been denied, and if you look at his food uh, income, he has no workers on gold, because the only gold he can go to is this one, this one, this one, and then I guess the, the one in the top. But I sent the man that I'm there already. So, the farms are not being used, he has 15 idle, and I'm still just, you know, pumping out units uh, forever, right? I get a tower, oh no, that's, I got destroyed. I don't know if I send another villager for tower or not, can't remember. But, right now, even though he is aged up, he does have a lot less units, so it is still okay for me to commit here, although I am gonna slowly try to transition to castle while, you know, sprinkling units here and there. His uh, high trade house was also not the best because he can risk placing it somewhere really juicy, so he just put it there. And then he tries to do a push here, but again, I have enough units to not win the fight, but defend until my other army arrives. I do a little sandwich right here. He decides to fight, but that was definitely not it. He pops gremlins, and I just decide, like, this is taking too much time for me to go from here to here. So I just decide to make rams and just um, rush gremlin to destroy it, and then I have basically everything open for the taken. As you can see, his income right now is in, in shambles. Making a tower again for the attack speed. And he gets better in archers. And I just decide to pretty much commit with spears as well, destroying the Kremlin. He goes in, but if you look at the attack speed and you look at the unit count, obviously I have way, way more. I harassed here multiple times by sending units. Um, so his food count wasn't great and I still see that he has food there. And once again, we go back to, you know, destroying houses, destroying production. I deny food from here. Obviously, there's no food on the bottom because I have a tower here. So I can see if he goes for the food on the bottom. So all I need to do is push this gold or this food and he will be tapping out. So again, the houses are going down. He's going to get a supply block. 100 to out of 90. I'm destroying production again, and um, he doesn't have enough economy to replenish all that. You can see he can't even spend his resources now because all his production is dying. I go for a high trade house, do a little ram here to push this side. He has to run with his villagers. 
And, uh, yeah, high trade house goes down. And now my army is here. His villagers are idle. He's trying to make a tower here. And he decides to kind of just try to delay the fight as much as possible. And I notice something here. He's kind of going to try to intercept my reinforcements or something, right? And I'm like, okay, I'm just gonna go for it. Fuck it. So I just right click his town center because this is his last landmark. So I do the uh, uh, palings right here with my longbows. And I'm just right clicking. He's trying to engage, but I don't really care. And I don't think he realized in the game that this is his last landmark. So. I have two rams, a mass spearman, and he is obviously winning this fight, but it doesn't matter because I've committed to killing the TC. And he got destroyed, as in all the landmarks are gone. So that's it for the grand finals of the Energy Slap Fest tournament. It was a best of seven, and I ended up winning four to one. Once I passed the group stage, once again I played against Louis, I won 3-2, I played against Demo, I won 3-1, and then I beat Marine Lord in the finals for a final score of 4-1. If you guys are watching on YouTube, the player you guys should watch out for for the next tournament, which is the EGC TV tournament at the end of this month, is definitely going to be Louis. I think he was my toughest opponent. He's really, really good right now. He's in really good form, and I hope he's still practicing every day and grinding games because... I would expect him to get at least top four. He's that good. I believe in him. He beat Lucifron and B in the group stage. And I think if he didn't meet me, he'd probably go way, way further. What was my win rate with HRE? I think I went 4-0, but I'm not sure. That's it. If you're watching this on YouTube, I want to thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoy these kinds of videos analyzing, I'll do the same for the EGC TV's tournament at the end of February when I play some games. And that is it. Check me out on Twitch or probably live right now. Twitch gamers, let's keep going.